this is a stealth RV build. It's just a trailer, cargo trailer, at least from the outside. But come in the inside. I've uh, put this, I guess, for lack of a better word, a locker in here. So locker's got storage bins, extra set of sheets. These are essentially drawers. And then, Ed, you can hang clothes right there. You've uh, got your chairs up there on top. Yeah, I'll have to figure out a way to secure them, but they're out of the way up there, and that's a good place for them the right size. So I'm heating it with this Mr. Heater Portable Buddy. Turned it on this morning. It was 52 degrees in here, and I left it on for 30 minutes, and it was 70 I put the pilot on and when I come back after about two hours it was too hot in here so I just turned the whole thing out. I took all these panels off and obviously burned them and that's the Skyrim dragon right there that I burned into that. Here I just took a, a weed burner and burned it and gave just highlighted the grain in it. So it looks a little more cabin feel but, but I had to take it off anyway because behind each one of these I put insulation. There was no insulation up here. So I put insulation in the oh, ceiling. The air conditioner, I'm not going to put it in right now because the, the hot air is passed. I will cut a hole right there in the side for the exhaust for the air conditioner. So, but for the most part, it just stays closed. This just stays caps on it. Okay, let me just get a, a shot of the whole thing here. So you've got your bed here. Yeah. You got your television. You got this over here that lifts up into a table. Yeah, you have an economy of space, right? So you don't want to take it up. So I've got this little coffee table that I modified a little bit. I turned some things around backwards from the design and put it together, strengthened it a little bit. It's pretty stout. I've stepped on it, sat on it. It's not giving in. I'm not a small fella. Got a little storage space here with a magnet. But you got a drawer to put this stuff in here. And then this part raises up. So, you know, you're having a bite to eat. Now the back wall here goes down and makes outer deck. Yes, this goes down. If you'll see, this has got indoor outdoor carpeting on it. So when you let it down, the ramp just becomes a porch. Uh, it's not a unique idea. A lot of campers have those, but Again, this is a stealth RV, so you see it parked somewhere, it just looks like an RV. That's all it looks like. And this is just like a little pantry thing. So you, this has got, you know, you can put, you know, bags of chips or whatever you got here. And then these two on the bottom are a little deeper. And so you could put cans of food there and just slide them right out of your way. And, and I'll come up with some kind of locking mechanism for that. And then you got a microwave. And you got, um, you put this cabinet in here or this shelving unit yeah, in here. Yeah, so I got this, this shelving unit. You can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, any of those. They're not very expensive. They're like, I got this one on sale and I believe it was like $200, maybe $210 or something like that. But they're super strong. I've used them before. They've got like, each shelf will hold like 800 pounds. Not that I'm going to use that for that. But when you put them together, they're very rigid and it's attached to the wall back here and it's attached to the wall at the bottom so it's not going to go anywhere you can adjust the height on the shelving so the first shelf i put in to coincide with my refrigerator this is not just a cooler this is an item from a company called bougie rv and as you can see it's got a, a deep side and a shallow side you can set this particular model to be both freezer, both refrigerator, one freezer, one refrigerator. So I've got it set right now. One of them, the deeper side is the freezer, the shallow side is the refrigerator, which is plenty enough for me. They use very little energy, they're very energy efficient. And then there was a happy circumstance that I didn't plan, but it worked out that way, was for my toolbox to fit right in there. So it's, as you can see, it's not gonna slide around or anything. Each shelf of this shelving system has uh, cross members that go across it. So the refrigerator sat perfectly between the two cross members. I went ahead and covered this part up with uh, some more shelving. 
Then this shelf, I set the height for me so that the height is good for, for me to, to like cook and stuff on. And then I just put plywood down and I got these ceramic tiles. They're for flooring, but they're real smooth. And uh, I didn't put any grout between them because I didn't feel like it needed it. It's, it's good and smooth, easy to clean, keep good and clean so you can prepare your food, microwave. And then I've got lights under the lip of this one. So you turn them on. Oh, yeah. And then you can brighten them or dim them, either one. I mean, they don't, they don't have much of a range on them, but like it, at nighttime, if you don't want these overhead lights on, you can just turn those on, which is handy. Then... Oh, just got the night light then. Yeah. And they will run on the low setting. They, they take three AA batteries on the low setting or LED lights. They'll run for 100 hours straight. Then I've got my sink in here. I got a little rigid thing right here so you could you have like extra counter space if you need it if there's something you know you're doing and you can you can just like set stuff on there but that just comes up out of the way and then i've got this piece back here adhered with some double-sided tape and it it's 3m it's not going to go anywhere i don't feel like but you can put you know just whatever you toothbrush uh you got your water and you just get your water out I, I got the three gallon instead of five gallon because it was, you know, easier to get in and out. So I bought these little shelves back here. And the idea is that you could put plates in those. I've got some mel melamar, is that how you say it? Melamine. Melamine. Melamine plates. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not glass or anything, so they won't break. They'll drain after you wash them. Plus, they can rattle and go on down the road and they'll not come out. Then up here, I plan on getting me some tubs for storage and that sort of thing. So, Plenty of storage. Yeah. And then this shelf, I think this is just going to be for like, you know, you're parked somewhere for a while or whatever. This outlet has USB ports in it. So you just plug your phone in, lay your phone up there to let it charge, you know. A catch all and, while you're stationary. Yeah, exactly. These lights here, these dim Ooh, and bright. Okay. So you can bring them down or bring them up either one you want and then of course turn them off and turn them back on so that's all good and then on the inside of this you can't see it but there is a uh, power strip that has a breaker in it so if it gets overloaded or anything it's annoying but i mean you just take screws back out and then you have to reset it and all that but it's for safety and then i got a smoke detector carbon monoxide detector here this light which operated right there is if you're plugged into your vehicle, you know, with your uh, trailer brake lights and all that stuff, that light will work. So if you're stopped on the side of the road and you want to jump up in here for real quick and look around for something, then that light's there. And this is a regular bed. Yeah, this is a, uh, it's what's called an extra long twin. So it's a little bit more narrow than a full bed but it's as long as a full bed so I, my feet don't hang over or anything like that you know the tv could be on a ball game could be on or whatever but so but, that when that's down it essentially makes an outdoor room like a patio yeah. deal yeah so i went underneath the cargo trailer and put if there's insulation under the bottom and then so you had you know three quarter inch plywood on the floor but i went ahead and put there's a, a very thin layer of um, styrofoam underlay under this which will act as a vapor barrier uh, so like you're going down the road water splashes up under the bottom of it it's not going to leach its way in here as much i mean it's not going to keep it all out but it'll keep a lot of it out because it's all that underlay is connected together and then the flooring went down over the top of it. Pretty sealed up. I feel like it's going to be fine, you know, on a really cold night. I mean, if you were out here trying to trying to keep warm when it was minus two, that might be a problem. But I think, you know, 20s. Around here. 20s, yeah. you know. 30s would be 30s fine. 30s, you'll be fine. Even in the, the teens, I feel like that you could keep the chill off enough to where it'd be very tolerable in here. I've got... 
a lithium ion battery that is going to go in here too hours 3000 watt hours of power so let's say for example <clears throat> this microwave uses a thousand watts of power right if it was hooked up to the battery you could run that microwave for three hours solid before the battery would be drained the pecron lithium ion battery you can actually with the pecron now they're not all like this all the lithium batteries are i, I did research the one that works best for me so if you're looking for one do your research is all I can tell you. There's a lot of videos out there. But the Pecron, the one that I got, a little pricier than most, but that's fine because I can go somewhere and stay potentially for a week at a time without having to charge it. And these LED lights that are above us, uh, even the television, the microwave, like I said, the refrigerator, none of it uses a lot of power. Everything is very power efficient. That's my plan in the future. Put a couple solar panels on top of the of the cargo trailer here. Okay, so and then, and then the TV, uh, of course, is is uh, just you've normal. got the Roku hooked to it. Yeah, it's just a Roku TV. Of course, you know the property that I own that I'm going to potentially bring bringing this over there too. I have no cell signal, so I'll end up having to get Starlink for that. But that's fine. So. Uh, if you'll see up here above that, I've got a power strip that comes in. Uh, those power strips have cutoffs on them too, so that you can't overload the system. It seems like it's got a lot of stuff plugged into it. It's really, it's got the refrigerator, it's got the microwave, and it's got a battery charger for my drill. So you, you got your heater here, and you see the little 20 gallon tank back here. This, um, 20 gallon tank on low will last 96 hours so then i've got another um power strip back here uh this one also has usb ports they all have usb ports because just because everything's got a usb now uh but this is what's going to happen the pecron battery will go here in the floor mm -hmm. and i have a Figured I'll probably put me a gate up so all this doesn't move around. And this is this is pretty much the power center, AC, all that sort of stuff. But the Pecron battery, all I have to do is take it off the charge. And then from the front side of it, where the outlet of the power is, I can plug it straight into this circuit. And once it's in this circuit, it will power all this stuff in here because it's all on one circuit. That's pretty much it, since I have my little plot of land that I'll not mention where it is on this video. Uh, that's paid for. Uh, I could just go up there and throw a couple of solar panels on it, and except for a crapper, I'm good to go. Potentially what I'm gonna do on my property is get a um, incinerator toilet. They're, they run off propane, they take the waste, they reduce completely to ashes. And I'm talking about like a couple of weeks worth for one person or maybe a week's worth with three or four people in the family. And it just reduces everything down to ash. And that's, you know, they're a little pricey. They're like $2,800, $3,000, something like that. But putting a septic tank in is going to cost fifteen grand. So, so the comparison's yeah. just a no-brainer. Yeah, so that's probably what I'll end up doing. She was worried about how the door shuts from the outside. It's got this bar neck mechanism, which is just, it, it just closes and then you can lock it. You were worried that somebody might lock me in. Yeah, I'm like, what would you do? Well, you can't be locked in because I'll just take the lock and lock it on the outside. Then you can't lock the door. If when you're on the inside and you want to just shut the door, you just pull your latch over and then it shuts. I'll, I'll put that latch and handle on. It's just gate hardware. Anyway, that's from the inside. So when you're in here, you can just shut that. And so you have to pull back on the door just a little bit to get it closed because I wanted it really tight to keep a good seal around the door. So I'm on the inside and I pull the door up tight and you're saying, well, somebody could just come up and shut the door. Now I'm trapped in there. You can't do that because what I'll do is is I'll take the lock and put it here. They can't lock it. Uh-huh, got it. 
that's not to say that somebody couldn't get in. Let's say that I had it, let's, some kind of an emergency or something and, and uh, EMS had to get in or the police had to get in or the fire had to get in for whatever reason. I mean, they've got, especially the fire departments, they've got what's called a K-bar. They just cram it right in the side and twist it and it'd pop right open. And you know that because you're a paramedic. Yeah. 